are here at Sun and Fun, and I'm talking with Matt Dander. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm going to get a little more knowledge about the Firth engines. We're standing in front of the F-33 because I like little airplanes, I like 103 airplanes, and, well, you've got the engines that most of them are using. For example, the, uh, well, the uh, 103, the Airline 103 uses, I believe, this very engine, right? Yeah, this is their standard engine when they want to make legal 103 weight. We're also the, this has actually become kind of the standard in the industry. Most of the major manufacturers that are offering illegal 103 ultralights are using this engine. Uh, Challenger, Team, uh, Fisher, uh, Airlight, of course, Qualt just started. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the, the cream of the crop. So know. tell us just a little bit about the engine. I mean, it's an interesting thing, first of all, that it's small and light and it produces, uh, well, you'll tell me about the power, but I see it's got a starter motor on it. Uh, give me some of the details of why this engine, beside the fact that uh, your competition is less than it used to be, perhaps, but tell me some good stuff about the engine, man. Well, most of the legal 103s were designed around the old 277, which has been gone for years. Many years now, yeah. It was, it was 66 pounds. This engine with electric, that was with recoil start. This engine with electric start is 44 pounds. <laughs> It has dual ignition. It's a rather third than, less weight. That's right. It's quite something. Yeah. And a single yeah. cylinder, right? Single cylinder. So if somebody's going to ask, doesn't it mean a lot of vibration? It has more vibration than a two cylinder, but Perth has done a lot of research over the years and, and found by a new way of balancing the crank to make a single cylinder engine fairly decent. You balance the crank to get rid of some of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they, one motion of a cylinder they, up and down they, inside yeah, the rope. They actually contracted with one of the universities in Germany to, to do some research and they found a way to make a crank better. Great. Excellent. How long has Perth been in the game? Uh, Perth was started in 1924. They originally wow. made gears. And 90 years old this year? Though. Yeah, wow. exactly. And then uh, they later became uh, uh, in the aviation business uh, before World War II. It was the same as Lycoming or Continental. Is they made certified four-cycle engines. Some of the Luftwaffe bombers had Hearth engines. Ah, is that right? And then after the war, Germany was no longer to make air, allowed to make aircraft for many years. Hearth A wanted, powered aircraft, yes. Powered, right yeah. So the engine guys, what do they do then? Yeah, so they... They wandered into the industrial two-cycle business where they made two, uh, rugged two-cycles for industrial stompers and different industrial equipment where the motor Water pumps has, and yeah, things like that. Yeah. Things where the motor has to be light. And then okay. in, with, the, with the oncoming of two-cycles being used in ultralights and light aircraft in the early 80s, they decided to combine their aircraft technology with their two-cycle technology to create purpose-built two-cycle aircraft engines. These are, these are not engines that are used on anything else like a snowmobile or a jet ski. Every one of the torque curve, the combustion, is all designed for turning a propeller to linear load. How long have you been doing this? 1993. 1993. So, well, you got your own anniversary here. You were last year. That was 20 years in the business yeah. for you. Then. Yeah. So that's a good long time. And there's a lot of folks that are working with you, all the companies you mentioned, but many others, because you also supply to the home building. Community, do you know? Yeah, that's really our, uh, probably our primary business. We home built aircraft, ultralight aircraft. We have uh, the largest hovercraft manufacturer in the country called Neoterra Hovercraft, uses all Earth engines. Uh, we also supply engines to three airboat manufacturers. Uh, so we have a pretty wide. Talk about some people that are hard on the equipment. Yeah. Uh, airboats uh, push those things pretty hard, so if you can handle that environment, you can handle an airplane yeah. easily, I'm thinking. Our, Both our, of them turn in props, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our largest uh, uh, customer is the military. We make a lot of UAV right? engines. There's UAVs over Afghanistan right now that are protecting our troops that are powered by Earth engines. All right, good for you. This is 28 horsepower. 28, okay. Dual admission is standard. Uh, it, uh, it, it's standard with recoil start, electric start. Yeah, see, it's got both on it uh, when you yeah. get the engine. Yeah, okay. when you order it with electric, we leave the recoil on it. Okay. Uh, it can be running inverted or upright. It's, uh, it's pretty versatile. And, and, uh, if you're trying to make legal 103, this is one way to go. Yeah, that's a very light engine, you said. So a uh, good bit lighter than the old 277 that we used to use a lot back in the day. Okay, so the uh, uh, the F-33 and its power, what's the next one up? You went to 40 horsepower and two yeah. cylinders. Where do we two. go after that? Then we have this one here. This one here, by the way, has the oil injection in, uh, on it. The 2702 oil injection would look exactly like this. Okay, so that's uh, re removing the need to pre-mix that. Yeah. Okay, you just put oil in a reservoir and gas where it goes and off you go. Yeah. This section here is available in two versions. We, we make one that's called the high torque, low RPM version. It's a 55 horse at only 5,500 RPM. It has okay. a very flat torque curve. 
I have some customers cruising as low as 37 and 3,800 RPM. I was going to ask, what's the value in that? Why would someone want that? Yep, yeah, that's why, because a lot of times when you when you uh, quarter an engine to get the power to higher RPM, the torque curve in the mid-range is the Nino, and you can't find a place where it'll cruise where you want to cruise, so you end up cruising at a higher RPM. I see, okay. And this Does that translate to longer engine life? Then? Oh yeah, quieter, less fuel use, longer life. The, the high torque, low, low RPM versions, we have several of them, they all have a 1200 hour TV on. Oh really? Okay. And then, and then, uh, then the same engine is available in another version called the 3203, and it makes 65 horse at 6,300 RPM. Okay. So of course it doesn't have that beautiful mid-range torque curve, but a little more punch if you have a two-seater. Sure. Yeah. Or a little bigger aircraft. Yeah, a little bigger aircraft or floats or something. Like that. Okay. Now another new thing we have is we for 15 years we've offered a Challenger installation package for the 3202 or the 3203 engine mount and cog belt drive and exhaust mount. Comes all complete. You just slip it on the tube and put the 0516 bolts right into the Challenger root tube. Um, one problem with that is if somebody's getting rid of a tired 0503, they can't use the belt drive over. Uh, okay. Well, we solved that this year. We now have a way you can buy our engine mount and exhaust mount, and you, and we have an adapter plate that will allow you to use your cog belt pulleys and belt from the 503 on either one of these engines. Oh, okay. It saves you about a thousand dollars. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that was yeah. a nice uh, thing you did for the customer out there. Yeah. Should have done it a long time ago. This is called the F23. It makes 50 horse at 6150. This looks like a very light engine, isn't it's it? It's very light. Matter of fact, it is so light, several uh, ultralight manufacturers are able to make 103 weight with it. Is that right, with yeah. this much power? Wow. Yeah, yeah. V Light is able to do it. Quicksilver is displaying a plane this year with this engine. They, they, they're 247 with this engine. Um, it's dual ignition. 247 pounds on the aircraft. Yep. So well within the numbers. Yep. With 50 horsepower. Yeah. That want, is going to be uh, some kind of performing aircraft. Yeah. They didn't know it was going to be that light, or they would have got electric start. They, <laughs> they got repo start. Yeah. Well, they had the weight to allow it, so they yeah. can do that on the next one. So. Yeah. An opposed engine is different. Than it, has, it has to have two exhausts. It's a little tougher to install. Uh, I see. Okay. The pistons fire simultaneously, and they move like this toward okay. each other. And that means they cancel their internal inertia. And hence the name Boxer. Yep. Okay. And they and they are extremely smooth. Is that extremely right? Extremely smooth. Uh, if they 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 bounce a little bit at idle because it's firing at the same time. Uh, and uh, that that power curve also does not like the gearbox, so that's why we have to have the belt. I here. see. Okay. Yeah. This engine weighs and recoil start, redrive, exhaust, complete engine, 71 pounds. Wow. Which is that's uh, like to give you an idea. A 447 used to weigh 87. Wow, goodness! And, and this is another <laughs> 10 horsepower. Though. Yeah, and a dual ignition to boot. And then uh, with electric start, it's 78. The next size up is a, we have a, we make a two-cylinder liquid cooled. It looks just like this, except it's got two cylinders instead of three. And okay. It's, a, it's available again in two versions: 60 horse at 5,000 and uh, 70 horse at 6,500. It's a, it's a drop-in replacement for the Rotax 582. Oh, okay. But, but unfortunately this year I didn't bring one, so we're not going to be able to see it. It's called the 3502 is the 60, 3503 is the 70. Now this is its big brother. We simply added another cylinder. And this is again available in two versions. Uh, the, the first is 3702. It's 84 horse at 4950. Wow. Sometimes when people compare this to some of the four cycles, they wonder which one is the four cycle. This is a two-cycle engine. That means a cruise, 35, 3600 RPM, lots of torque. And then if you need a little more power for a heavy flow plane or something, we make a 100 horse version. It makes 100 horse at 6000 RPM. Wow, and what kind of weight is this in? This comes in at 129 drive. For many, many years, it's been on the market for 27 years, is we used to call it the F30. And over the years, Improvement after improvement after improvement, it became almost not the same engine anymore. And the reason it was called, or when we say F, it usually means a free air cooled engine. Ah, okay, that's Well, the... we found that 90% of the people were ordering with fan cooling, which was an option. And a few years ago, Hertz decided to just make fan cooling standard to make it cheaper. And and so the name now is called a 3003 in the 100 horse version, 100 horse at 6200. And the 3002 is the 80 horse version. It makes 80 horse at 5,500, and again a flatter torque curve. Wow, that's quite a range of uh, engines then in the Hearth family here. Yeah, this is yeah. a Boxer four cylinder, twin fan cool, um, dual exhaust. So it makes a great gyro engine or a trike engine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, Matt, thanks for the total review of all the engines you've got on the market, but there's a few more bits and pieces I think you want to tell us about. Yeah, I forgot that the, the, the last three engines we talked about are, are actually the, 30, uh, the 55 and 65 also. 
are all available with fuel injection. It's an option. Ah, okay. And uh, they are also all available with oil injection, except for this one is not. But all the other engines are available with oil injection. The fuel injection is automatic altitude and temperature compensating. It's immune to carb ice because there's no venturi. It's about 5% more fuel efficient. Uh, and, and, and it ranges in price from $1,500 to $2,000 depending on the engine. Okay, and uh, talk to me a little bit about TBO of the engine. Well, it's a time between overhaul for those that don't know, and that means that's when you typically have to at least look at it, if not do some work on it. Yeah. Well, you've noticed that almost all the engines we make are high torque, low RPM version. The TBO on all of those is $1,200. Okay. And all the high performance versions is $1,000. Okay. All right. Well, that's a lot of information, but people, especially with engines and teams, they've always got another question. So where can we go find you on the web, and we'll put it up on the screen for folks. Oh well, we're. Uh, uh, we're located in Ohio, and we're our, on the web. We're www.recpower.com. -E All right, very good. We've done a lot of work with Matt in the past. We'll continue to do some more in the future. You can find that and lots of information about many, many aircraft and lots and lots of videos all on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining Matt and me here at Summit Club.